Extended techniques are a lot like condiments. A tiny bit of wasabi delicately smeared on a piece of tuna can be a sublime experience. But slather it all over a meat pie and you've got a disaster on your hands. The bass clarinet is capable of all sorts of musical condiments, from percussive effects to microtones, that's the notes in between the ones on the piano, through to multiphonics, that's more than one sound at once. And how these are written down or notated in music needs to be very specific so that they can be reproduced accurately. But how they're used in a musical context is also very important. If the sound doesn't match the style of music or if something's overused, it's a lot like putting ketchup on your sashimi. <laughs> so the bass clarinet has been used as a solo instrument for about 60 years now, so these techniques are well established. The information for them, however, has become ambiguous, out of date, and for the most part, it's in big heavy books. Now this means rifling through pages and pages of information, looking for very specific sounds. When you do find them, quite often they're categorised under a strange system that's specific to that author. Now for performers, this means a lot of extra legwork when interpreting a new piece of music. But for composers, it can mean that they can't find the sound that they have in their head. And that's when the music suffers. So I plan to do away with the books. I plan to take all of the current documented and common knowledge on extended techniques for bass clarinet and create a searchable computer program that allows composers to look for notation and sound information on these techniques, but also helps performers learn how to create them with videos, sound files, and interactive spectroscope images, like the background here, that allows the performer to see their sound and compare it to a pre-recorded ideal. I'll test this resource by giving it to composers and performers, and I'll get feedback from them on how useful it was to their process. I'll also use it myself in the preparation of a CD recording with new existing repertoire and some new pieces written by composers using the resource. And finally, I'll use this as a starting point for a broader discussion on the semiology of extended techniques. Why do we name and <coughs> notate them the way we do? Uh, does their musical meaning vary between different genres of music? Could this resource be a way of presenting extended techniques so that the musical meaning is at the forefront, so they're not just silly noises and we're not putting chocolate sauce in chicken soup? <laughs> Finally, if these techniques are used so often, why are they still called extended? In 1977, Philip Riefeld prefaced his book, New Directions for the Clarinet, by saying, we were still at the pioneering stage of extended techniques, and if history was to be any guide, it would be years before we could look at them from the standpoint of uniform practices. Yes. 35 years later in 2012, it's time. Thank you. Thank you.